Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another what sold from last week video. If you guys are new here, I come on every single week and share what is selling well for me on eBay and Poshmark. I like to do this for a few reasons. One, to share bolus with you guys, but also to keep track of my own sales and figure out what changes I'm making that are working or not working in my business. Let's dive in to these sales. All right, so all of these sales happen between March 10th through the 16th. I am almost caught up so i'm gonna be filming another one today and then i will be completely caught up and back on like a week-to-week -week basis on these what sold reports so very excited about that i had a pretty good sales week this week this was one where i sold 246 items my gross item sales were almost 7500 dollars my average sale price was pretty low at 30 dollars 39 cents um as usual, sold a lot of lower price stuff on Poshmark, cleared out some older inventory. Uh, but as you can see on eBay, my average item sale price is $41.60. So super happy about that. Um, and then again, I did sell a lot on Poshmark for a lower average sale price of $21.62. Have a lot to share with you guys. So I'm going to be quick and dive right in, have a mixture of bread and butter um, and bolo items to show you. Um, this is Johnny Was. I think we all know that Johnny Was is good. I just wanted to show you a different label that I don't get to show you very often because they do have different lines and labels. This is 3J Workshop. So just, I guess, being aware that that's a line within Johnny Was. This is a gorgeous embroidered midi dress in a size large. Um, I did have a couple flaws on this. It ended up selling even with those flaws for my full asking price of $125. Um, and this one, let's see, this one took only a couple of weeks to sell. This is a newer brand to me. Um, this is called Listen to the Flowers. And this is a line from the brand Rundholz. If you guys see anything uh, Rundholz related, uh, definitely a bolo. Kind of along what I've been talking about in the last few What Sold videos. One of my core customers is the like artsy, log and looky, uh, type of buyer more mature. I would say this definitely falls under that artsy line. Um, we listed this for $125 and someone accepted an offer to watchers of $106. This one sold within just two days of getting it listed. Uh, here's that label again, but also nowhere on this does it say run house. So you'll just have to kind of learn um, as you come with things um, to do your comp and see if they are from that run holes. But if you definitely see this on a label, I would look it up and anything um, very artsy looking like this, I just always look up. Um, along those same lines, this is another newer brand to me. I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's Kadim. Um, it, you can see that this is a very log and looky, interesting, artsy top. I priced this one real high, even though it had multiple spots throughout, because I thought it was so unique and interesting. Um, so this one, I listed for $100. It did sell for our full asking price, and this one only took four days to sell. Um, the back of it says the sass on, so. And this is a good indicator of a high quality item, is very simple labels um, and also ones that like the lettering's the same color as the background I've noticed uh, can sometimes also be a good indicator but very unique item I would have looked that up regardless of brand next up this is a newer brand to me as well just called daily drills um, they're apparently known for their shorts but they do make some other things that can sell well um, I was lucky enough to get this in wholesale new with tags and here's a little back patch Pretty simple looking shorts, right? You wouldn't have known that these are higher dollar unless you look them up. Um, they're known, I think, for their seersucker shorts, but they're shorts in general. But this one's a seersucker material. I listed this for $85. It did sell for our full asking price. It sold within just five days of being listed. Next up, this is a Ralph Lauren piece. This is their black label Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren makes a few different lines and also different labels. If you've got one of the higher end ones, you would want to put that in your title. As you can see, we put black label maxi dress here. So substantial piece, great label, great brand. Uh, we listed this for $85. It sold on an offer to watcher for $72. This one did take several months to sell. Um, but I think that that's pretty normal for Ralph Lauren pieces. 
Next up, this is a newer brand to me. It's called Emerson Fry. This is their India collection beautiful maxi dress. I listed this for $85. It sold on an offer to watcher for $72 and it only took two days to sell. If I were to see anything by Emerson Fry, I would definitely look it up. All right, this came from that vintage warehouse, ginormous, humongous, very large thrift haul that lasted over several days. If you guys remember that series a while back, um, picked up quite a few Lafayette 148 pieces. However, I was very, very selective in what I got because this brand, although it does retail for a lot and it can flip for a lot, it really depends on the piece. Otherwise, it just sits and sits and sits. Um, their dresses in general, I have pretty good luck with. I picked this one up because as you can see, it's a very unique color. It's got that, I don't know how to pronounce it, like jacquard print pattern to it. Um, very interesting piece, so I thought that that would pull it through, even though it was short sleeve, a small size, and a shorter length. I listed this one high because of its uniqueness at $85. It sold on an offer to Watcher for $72, and this one actually only took about a week to sell. Next up, this is a brand I've mentioned before. It's Wolford. Um, in the past, I've sold mostly their like leggings or undergarments, but come to find out they actually make dresses and things like that. So this is a Wolford dress, kind of just very simple ribbed. A lot of the pieces that I find of theirs are just black. Again, you've got to know these brands or else you might be passing on them. Uh, I pick up anything Wol Wolford. This one I listed high at $75 just because it was a dress and it did take several months to sell, but it sold for my full asking price of $75. Next up, this is a Decent women's jeans wear, brand to sell. I say decent because it really depends on the style. Otherwise, sometimes it's oversaturated. This is a Goldie jeans. And these are a smaller size in a size 26, but these are their 90s crop jeans, which is a pretty popular style by them right now. I listed these for $65. They did sell for my full asking price. They took um, a few months to sell. Next up, this is a brand that's been kind of hit or miss for me, but it falls under that kind of log and look, mature, artsy. This one's a little bit more hippie boho, um, but falls under that category of a core customer for me, which is Prairie Cotton. I got this one because not because it's 100% sell rate, but because they do sell pretty decently. This one was a more substantial piece and it was a larger size. Um, so maxi dress, nice print extra large. I listed this for $65. Um, it did have some wear to it. It did sell for my full asking price um, and it took a few months to sell. Next up, this is a bolo that I talk about often, Eileen Fisher plus sizes. This one is a 3X. It is a gold silk button down top. So lots of factor stacking going for it. Because of that, I priced up. Um, every time I know that I have a bolo and then there's extra factors that are also bolos. I start adding a few bucks per each of those factors. So this one, again, had a ton going for it. Um, I listed this for $65. It did sell for my full asking price and it only took five days to sell. This is a brand I've mentioned quite a few times in the past what sold videos. It also falls under that artsy log and look category of my core customer. This is Planet by Lauren G. They make, um, Mostly one size fits all pieces, uh, so they're usually very oversized, uh, but high quality materials and usually pretty simple colors also. This is kind of out of the ordinary, I think, for Planet. This bright blue, normally it's like tans, blacks, whites, things like that. Um, so this is a Planet by Lauren G sweater. This I had listed for $65. It sold on an offer to Watcher for $55 and it only took a week to sell. This is a designer brand, M.M. LaFleur. I have some pretty good luck selling this, so anytime I come across it, I get it. It doesn't always show 100% sell-through rate, but it almost always sells well for me. Sometimes it takes a couple of months, but it does sell for quite a bit. So M.M. LaFleur. This is a women's cable knit short sleeve sweater. I listed it high at 
dollars. It sold on Offer to Watcher for fifty nine dollars, and it did take, as I said, several months to sell, um, but great return on investment on MM Lafleur. All right, this is a newer brand to me. It's called Universal Works. This is a men's pair of pull on like pants, denim looking. Um, I listed these for $40. They sold for my full asking price and they took a month to sell. Next up, you guys know this brand, Frank and Eileen. Um, I I love this brand. I pick up everything in this brand. It sells well for me. Um, this one I thought I would share with you guys because this is a pretty interesting piece by them that I wouldn't have thought they would sell. It was called the T-Lab Midi Skirt. I don't know. I like sharing, I guess, the out of ordinary pieces that you might pass over. And I definitely feel like that's one of them for Frank and Eileen. Normally their tops and dresses are what people are looking for. They don't really think to look for things like this, uh, but they also sell denim and all kinds of things. So I thought it was worth bringing up. I listed this for $60. It sold on an offer to watcher for $51 and it sold the day after being listed. I mentioned this brand a lot in the last couple of videos. Again, falls under my core customer. This is Flax. I would say this falls under the like log and look um, aesthetic. This is a larger size also, which really upped the value, size 3X. I listed these wide leg pants for $50. They sold for my full asking price and they only took a couple of weeks to sell. This is J. Crew. I have talked about selling their longer length dresses quite a bit. Um, I try to, you know, look for modern styles or really great materials or larger sizes. But in general, during spring and summer, their midi or maxi length dresses and, and skirts, honestly, uh, perform pretty well and can be a good bread and butter for us. This one was an older label J. Crew. Um, but it was 100% silk and it was new with tags. I listed this for $50. It sold for an offer to watcher of 42. Um, and it only took about a week to sell. This is an interesting category that I have found myself picking up a lot of recently. Gorp core men's like vintage or Y2K pants. Um, Gorp core. Gorp Core, G-O-R-P Core. If you haven't looked that up, look it up. It's kind of like an outdoorsy aesthetic. Stuff like this is very trendy. Um, so I've got my eye on that when I wouldn't have otherwise have, you know, picked stuff like this up. This is Polo Sport by Ralph Lauren. Um, not typically a line in Ralph Lauren I like to get. However, again, this aesthetic is very popular and I thought this would do well. These are a pair of men's yellow cargo windbreaker pants. Did have some staining. I listed these for $45. They sold for my full asking price, and they only took um, about, uh, let's see, a month to sell. Next up, this is um, a really interesting piece. This is an apron brand that has over 100% sell-through rate, so I'd highly recommend looking it up. Headley and... I don't know if it's Benet or Bennett, um, but fantastic brand. They have this little and sign here, which might be a good indicator of the brand, um, but fantastic, fantastic comps on this. So Headley and Benet or Bennett. I listed this for $60 pre-owned, which is insane. Um, and I ended up having an offer to watch her for $51, which someone accepted. This one sold the day after being listed. A pre-owned apron, you guys. Keep your eye out for it. This is a brand that's been performing pretty decently in the menswear department for me. It is Buttercloth, known for their soft, buttery feeling uh, cloth stuff. This is a men's button-down shirt in a larger size. They listed it for $45. It did sell for my full asking price, and it did take several months to sell, but it did sell for full asking price. Next up, I've been selling a lot of Pendleton. I don't know how long that'll, you know, be the case because we are moving into spring and summer. Um, but I've mentioned before, any kind of Pendleton, especially in the men's department that has any indication of a specific style, I always look up. This one said high grade Western wear, and it was a men's, uh, Pearl Snap shirt. I listed it for $40. It did have a small flaw. It did sell for full asking price and it only took a couple of weeks to sell. Next up, this is a brand every single year that performs well for me, specifically in dresses. It is Title IX. This is definitely an older label by them, um, but it was a women's size large uh, open knit 
dress. I listed this for $40. It did sell for my full asking price and it took several months to sell. Uh, there are newer label stuff um, and like the short sleeves and sometimes like midi length and stuff like that perform extremely well in the dresses category. I can usually flip them for like 35 to 40 bucks. So the fact that I can sell um, an older label that's kind of like sweater material for 40 bucks is awesome. Shows you just how great the brand can be in this category. Here's another flax piece. This is a size small, um, which like I said before, usually larger sizes perform better. However, this is a 100% linen piece. It is a longer length cardigan, so more substantial piece. We listed it for $45. It sold for our full asking price and it only took a month to sell. All right, this is something I talk about often. They are plus sizes in the anthropology pieces. I pick up every single one of them. I know I can at least get 25 bucks for them. Um, very high sell through rate in the plus sizes for anthropology. So this is made by anthropology. It's a 3X beautiful kind of patchwork mixed print looking top size 3X. Listed this for $40 and it sold for full asking price. It only took one day to sell. Next up, a brand that performs pretty well for me. I don't come across it often, um, but when I do, it usually flips quickly. It is Emojean and Willie. This is a sun faded t-shirt. I listed it for $40. There were a couple issues with it. Um, otherwise I might've listed it higher. It did end up selling for full asking price um, and it sold the same day that we listed it. Next up, one of my favorite Athletic wear brands to pick up Vuori. I pretty much pick up everything Vuori right now, specifically their sweatshirts, even if they've got a little bit of pilling on them. Um, very high sell through rate. This was called the Sunnyside Crew Neck Sweatshirt, and it was a size large. Um, it did have some pilling throughout. I listed it for 40. It sold for a full asking price the day after getting it listed. All right, this is Eileen Fisher. I mentioned earlier, plus sizes in this brand um, are bolos. However, sometimes we do make exceptions for the smaller sizes if they've got another very substantial piece. Eileen Fisher customers, for me, fall under that core category of customer that I'm talking about, again, for my business. Um, and so I know that this customer really values high quality materials. So I always try to put the material um, in the title of Eileen Fisher pieces. So even though it was a smaller size, it was a longer length skirt. It was a linen blend. And so those two pieces pulled it together, even though it was a size small. Listed this for $50. It sold on an offer to watcher for $42. Um, and this one took about three weeks to sell. Um, another one that performs well in plus sizes, I'm not sure why it's not letting us see the label here, but I think you guys know the label J Jill in plus sizes. This is a size 4X. Um, the larger the size in this brand, the better the sell through rate is. So 4X is really good, even though this is a much older piece. I listed this linen button down top in a, a size 4X for $35. It sold very quickly on an offer to watcher for $30. It only took a week to sell. This is a brand I love picking up in the women's denim department. It's Judy Blue. I have found that since this brand became popular, it is starting to get a little bit oversaturated and I have to stick to the larger sizes in this brand to get them to move quickly. So just a tip for you guys, this is a size 13 and a skinny fit capri, distressed pair of jeans. I listed them for 35. They did sell for full asking price. Um, these ones did take several months to sell. Uh, this is kind of a category in the men's department that performs well for me, like big spell out brands on stuff. Not to say every single thing, but I have noticed over the years that I can get by with selling brands I wouldn't typically get if they've got a big spell out. This being one of them, this is Hugo Boss. It is a men's 3XL polo and you can see it has um, the large spell out in the middle here. Um, this one I listed for $35. It did sell for our full asking price and it only took um, about a month and a half to sell. 
Next up, I've mentioned this in previous videos. This is Loudmouth Golf Shorts. I've been sewing these very quickly. This one was very bright and loud. Um, it did have multiple spots, however. I listed it for $40. It sold on an offer to watcher for $34, and it only took a couple of days to sell. This again follows under that core customer that I have. This is Click by Color Me Cotton, size large. Any kind of wide leg log and looky pants like this, I always look up. Um, this brand sometimes performs well for me. I think it depends on the size and what it is, um, but in general, we do look it up, especially in a substantial piece like these pants. Um, we listed these for $40. They sold on an offer to watcher for $34, and they took about a week to sell. Next up, I love showing these sales because everybody gets so stirred up. Uh, larger size Old Navy dresses sell very well for me, especially if they're a longer length. This one was not even longer length. It was a size XXL, just a knee length kind of sundress. Um, just as an experiment, we listed this a little bit higher at $30. Um, it doesn't even have, let me see, I don't think, at least we didn't specify it, like linen or anything more substantial in it. Yeah, it's just cotton. Pretty plain striped dress. Am I telling you to pick up every plain Old Navy larger size dress? No, I'm not. But I, just as an experiment, we picked this up and listed it at 30 bucks. It did sell for a full asking price and it took, let's see here, only a month and a half to sell. So there is something to be said for larger size Old Navy dresses. I don't know. Keep that in mind. Again, not telling you to pick every single one of them up, but we have pretty good luck with them. I do try to stick to the uh, longer lengths though. This one was not longer length. All right, next up, um, another category performing really well for us right now is athletic brand dresses and jumpsuits. This one is Outdoor Voices. This is a one shoulder kind of athletic mini dress. We listed it for 30. It did sell for full asking price. Um, this one did take a couple of months to sell. This is a brand that has been gaining popularity very quickly. It is Natural Life. In their dresses, they have a pretty decent sell through rate and are going for decent money. Um, this one we got in, in wholesale, unfortunately. Um, it did end up having the tassels cut off of it, even though it was like new without tags. Um, but we thought it was a cute enough piece we were going to attempt to sell it. We listed it for 30 bucks. It did end up selling for a full asking price, even with those flaws. Um, and it only took four days to sell. Um, this one was a tunic top. However, their dresses, especially the longer length ones, again, are gaining a lot of popularity right now. So I'd keep your eye out on those and consider picking them up if you find them. This again falls under my core customer of that like artsy mature uh, customer. This is Allie Miles. Allie, Mar Allie Miles, larger sizes, uh, have a really great sell through rate. This is just a size large, but it's pr um, pretty decent sell through rate. Kind of an art to wear tunic top. I listed this for 30. It sold for full asking price and it sold the day after being listed. Here's another one of those daily drill shorts. However, these ones are pre-owned, kind of a satin high rise. I listed these for 35. They sold on an offer to watcher for $30 and they sold the day after being listed. Here is a more bread and butter sale. This is Catherine's. Um, I try to stick to lots of factor stacking in this brand. You can see this is kind of a plain piece, um, just a solid color, but it is a longer length cardigan and it is a very large size and a size 5X. So for those reasons, I thought we could um, still get it. I listed this for 25. It sold on an offer to watcher for $21. It sold the day after being listed. This is another bread and butter brand that has been performing pretty decent for us. It is Cobby. I try to stick to their newer label, which looks like this, and also size large and up. And I found that it flips very quickly for me. This is a sleeveless top, so not as substantial. We listed it for $27. It sold on an offer to watcher for $23. Um, it did take several months to sell, however, but it has been some pretty good bread and butter sales for me in this brand. Another bread and butter brand that performs pretty well for us is Still Packed Organic. I pick up almost everything I find in this brand 
some pieces, not so much if they're not substantial enough. This one's a pair of women's pull-on pants in a larger size. We listed them for $25. They sold on an offer to watcher for $21, um, but they did sell the same day as they were listed. Last one on eBay before we dive into some of these full price Poshmark sales. This is another bread and butter logo lore Goldstein plus size stuff. This is just a 1x. Um, once you get 2x, 3x usually has a higher sell through rate. Um, I can usually get anywhere from 20 to 25 bucks for these. This one is a more plain piece too. So I'm, you know, we're, we're risking it here on the sell through rates and the smaller size. Listed this for 25 bucks. It sold on offer to watcher for $21. This one did take several months to sell. All right, next up for the Poshmark sales, um, this is Hardtail Forever. I find that Hardtail Forever, anything that is super tie dye or super um, Y2K looking performs very well in this brand. Um, otherwise, I usually leave stuff behind. So this is an extra small high-low tie-dye dress. This one sold for $35. Another brand I like getting in dresses during this time of the year is Bowden. Um, and I preferably try to get their larger sizes. This one's a 16 long, uh, it was called the Olivia Midi Shift Dress. It sold for $34, which between 30 and 40 is pretty typical for me for Bowdoin pieces. <clears throat> uh, this is an interesting piece. This is a Pendleton baby blanket, which I think is so cute. Little sheep design. Uh, this pre-owned went for $40. So if you are in the linen section and you think it might be Pendleton, I would definitely take a look. This is a newer brand to me. It is Sun Kim. This also falls under my core customer. Um, very artsy. Um, not so much anything else, but their jackets have a pretty decent sell-through rate. This is a size extra large, and this is um, their crinkle boyfriend jacket, which I've learned recently from <laughs> attempting to steam things that were not steamable. Some brands actually make things to have that crinkle texture. Um, this being one of them, we could not get this texture out. And I thought like, what the heck, but it's actually made this way. So if you have something that no matter how many times you steam it or iron it, the crinkles are still there, look up the brand because it might be made that way. And you'll want to include a uh, crinkle or textured or something like that um, in your listing. So this jacket sold for $60, which is pretty good. Next up, this is a brand that retails for quite a bit and sometimes can sell well. It is Ghani, G-A-N-N-I. Um, this is a balloon sleeve seersucker top. Um, lots of people have this brand listed for very, very, very high. Um, however, the sell-through rate is not there for me, so I list mine lower. Um, this one was also missing its original belt that came with it. So another reason we price lower. Um, so I listed this, I think, for around 50 on Poshmark. We accepted an offer of $36. This is also a newer brand to me. It is called Kittany. There is not much information out there. I saw more information on Poshmark than I did on eBay. Um, but pretty good sell rate and people are liking this brand. This is called the Gatia Crop Top. They kind of give me Doan vibes a little bit. Um, this sold for $50 on Poshmark. Here's another packed organic piece. This is a more substantial piece, size extra large women's wide leg jumpsuit. It sold for $32. This is more of a bread and butter brand for me these days. It is Fair Tea. Um, this is a women's sweater hoodie. It sold for $27 on Poshmark. This was a really cool sale, although I am a little bit sad. I got this probably like a year ago. It is a vintage Y2K 2001 Dragon Ball Z t-shirt. Um, if you guys see any like Y2K or vintage anime shirts, I would absolutely look into them. This one was a really cool one. I had this listed much, much higher, but I've been sitting on it for a while. Um, this one, I ended up accepting an offer of $50 on. I think I had it price closer to a hundred originally, but I'm not here to sit on things. So when I got that offer, I went ahead and moved it. 
Next up, Athleta. Um, this is also more of a bread and butter item for me. Um, however, we have been able to sell the newer pieces. It's just one of those brands you really got to look up the style name for and like do your due diligence on comps. This one was called the Forecast Rain Jacket. It did have a small spot on it. We listed it uh, pretty high and accepted an offer of $53. Here's another Eileen Fisher piece. Again, it is not plus size, but it does have some things going for it. So it is a longer length skirt, a maxi skirt, and it's silk blend. It went for $34. Here is a newer brand to me, again with that um, same color lettering and background. This would be one of those examples of possibly an indicator of quality. This is a newer brand to me called, I think it's Sablin. This is a 100% silk midi skirt and it sold for $70 on Poshmark. This is a Lululemon piece. Uh, Lululemon's definitely um, not what it used to be, so I really think you need kind of like Athleta to know exactly what you have, try to figure out the style name. Um, because if not, if I were to just look up Lululemon women's short sleeve t-shirts in a size four, I probably would have priced this closer to 20 to 25 bucks. But since I was able to know the style, which is the Swiftly Tech shirt, we were able to price it higher and get $34 for this item. So for Lululemon, Athleta, and some of the other athletic wear brands, I do think it's important to learn those style names so you can comp correctly. This is just a Madewell jacket. However, some factor stacking here. It is a larger size in a size XL. It is a more substantial piece in a denim jacket and it went for $36. Here's a Lauren Ralph Lauren piece. I have some pretty good luck selling their dresses in plus sizes during spring and summer. This is an 18W floral dress with a little ruffle detail. It sold for $34. This is uh, a brand that performs well in just about any category. It is Aviator Nation. These are a pair of baby three to six month pants and they sold for $35, you guys. So definitely some kids brands that you want to look for. Typically, um, the kids brands are not standalone Usually it's the same brands that are performing well in the adult section. Um, but if you don't want to like really look in the kids section, just look for, you know, brands like this. So $35 for pre-owned baby pants. That's crazy. Absolutely a great sale. Next up, a brand that I love picking up during this time of the year is Jay McLaughlin. This is their Catalina cloth, which is like a nylon stretchy material, nylon spandex. Um, this is just a pretty plain popover top, but it was their Catalina cloth, which adds a lot of value. I think I listed this around 40. Someone sent an offer for 30, which I accepted. Again, with my core customer, this is a pair of wide leg overalls by the brand Faunus Venus. I just relooked this brand up for you guys to see, you know, if it was like a super big bolo or something like that. And there's not much info on it. I... I don't think it's the brand itself. I think it's just the style. So again, you guys see anything log and looky or artsy like this that really stands out, I would look it up. Um, we kind of made up a price with this one, a pair of wide leg patchworky overalls. We ended up accepting an offer of $38 for these, but there is a lot of money to be made um, in this aesthetic. Also following along this aesthetic, this is a log and look brand, Anisio, and their linen dresses have a pretty decent sell through rate and sell for quite a bit. This is a linen tank dress. Uh, I feel like this went for full price. I think we listed it for 45 and it did sell for full asking price. Another J. Jill plus size top. This is a size 1X, pretty plain white button down top, went for $29. This is similar to Fayer T for me, Marine Layer. They do have a couple pieces in both those brands that can, you know, sell for a lot. But in general, I'm getting like 20, 25 bucks for the more plain stuff like this men's uh, button down top. This one sold for 20. This is a great brand to pick up in more substantial pieces. This is Sundance as a women's size 12 patchwork maxi skirt. It sold for 34. 
This is a great brand to look for in the pajama section, depending on what you have. Notori. This is a very interesting, this also came from that vintage uh, warehouse haul. I actually think we got two sets of these. This is called the Dynasty, which I think one of you guys told me the print name. So thank you for that. Dynasty Crowded City Satin Pajama Pants or set with the top two. Size extra, extra large, which definitely helped. Um, it sold for $75. And I think I, I think I sold the other set of these and maybe just have the robe left. I can't remember. These are a very interesting style of jeans that I've noticed have been becoming popular in a lot of brands that we all like to sell. These ones Madewell is calling the balloon jeans in a size 29, but this shape, I've sometimes seen it called balloon. I've sometimes seen it called barrel jeans. I think free people calls them barrel jeans, but this style where the hips kind of come out and they're wide leg, they're very interesting shape. I would keep your eye out for it is like a new trend. These ones sold for $35. This brand is pretty bread and butter for me these days, but in spring and summer performs pretty well in the men's department. They are chubbies. These are called the Enfuego shorts. Um, they sold for $27. This is definitely a bolo in the dress and actually pretty much everything, but specifically dresses. Spell in the Gypsy Collective. Very small size and an extra, extra small but a very gorgeous satin dress. Um, this one sold on an offer for $61. I would probably pick up anything in this brand. And you can see just how plain this looks. Like a thrift store might put this in the nightgown section. So like you really have to know what you're doing and know your labels. And lastly, these are a pair of Kohlhaan shoes. These were a horse bit loafer, very high quality leather Kohlhaan pair of loafers and a larger size, size 10 and a half. Um, they sold for $53. And this was one I went against the comps on because when I look this stuff up, um, they actually did not have, I don't even think it had a 50% sell through rate, but just gut instinct. I mean, they felt like they'd hardly been worn. Very, very high quality leather, horse bit, Kind of like a spell out detail. You can see there's the C and the H here for the Kohlhaan. Larger size. Like everything was telling me to get it. I went against comps. It did sell quickly for $53. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every single time I post these videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.